Iron Tea Junction, a sporting goods and silk screen printing shop in Freeport, is busy trying to keep up with all the demands for Desert Storm transfers. The company has started a sales promotion of Desert Storm t-shirts to help support a fund for the men and women on active duty in the Persian Gulf conflict. We started out with Stevenson County. They got a support group that they're starting to form, and we came up with an idea to, uh, for every shirt that we sold, we'd donate 10% back to that support group for their families and the troops when they return home. And the towns that we're going to, the locations were... The shirt logo was designed locally by Scott Stichter of Pearl City. Gary just called me one night at home and decided to rough out some ideas for the war shirts because we've seen it on TV, and we decided to go with each personal town can personalize each, each shirt. Local groups and businesses are also getting on the bandwagon and sponsoring these t-shirts. They sell for about $10 a piece. Rose Tierhart, WIFR TV Action News, Freeport. Covering the news that affects all of us here in the state line area, one of the most controversial topics lately has been the Rockford public school system. But school officials today have announced a positive new program. A ladybug. Even at this age, children may be struggling with developmental disabilities. It's often a silent battle with symptoms difficult to identify. That's why the Rockford School System has announced it will help screen children up to the age of four. The program is called Child Find. We all hear of medical or physical checkups. This is sort of a learning checkup. Even before a child enters the public school system, he or she may have already developed some of these problems. That's why school officials say this program is so important. The research definitely shows that dropout rate decreases, employment increases, they become a working members of the society. Colleen Burns, WIFR-TV, Action News. The early morning fire managed to trap more than a dozen people, some of which were forced to jump to the sidewalk below for safety. An elderly couple, 71-year-old Gene Olszewski and 70-year-old Warren Lamb, were not as fortunate. They perished in the fire. But one woman who did manage to escape the blaze praised firefighters for their swift action. I smelled smoke and I woke up. And that, if, uh, that, that effort had not taken place. Fire investigators say the building was properly equipped with fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, and exit lights, and ironically enough, is the second building to burn in the Broadway Business District within the last six months. And although officials have not started an in-depth investigation yet, they are fairly certain it did not start inside. Those seven people who were injured in the fire were treated and released from Swedish American Hospital this afternoon. Damage to the building and businesses within it are estimated at about $300,000. Bill McGinty, WIFR-TV, Action News. The union says the cuts hurt students. Teacher Julie Anderson agrees. In her class, a school is usually just a moment away. But luckily, there's a custodian nearby. For now. This is going to have a drastic impact because our kids are on the floor, and so it really, we need to have clean space. The building and maintenance union knew some cuts were coming but it still doesn't want to believe this. It's just going to progressively get worse. Our children, are, our, our safety is being jeopardized. 18 members of the union are on the hit list, a union that says it's already bare bones. We continue to carry the cross, the burden of it all. Union done. leaders will uh, meet with the district tomorrow to see what can be done. Carrillo so warns Rockford could end up like Chicago. Ignoring the buildings to the point everything is in ruins. Children's education is the most important thing in this world. Cutbacks are nothing new to the building and maintenance union. They've lost 100 members since 1988 alone. And they fear that trend has no end in sight. Tony Thomas, WIFR-TV, Action News.
Thank <laughs> you. 